Hi there, this is Kathy Crow at the Crow Cottage. It is so nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. I am going, I'm, I'm going to try to do this easel card today. And I am at the very last minute uh, trying to get the directions online. Um, so I, as I did it, I realized some of my, I'm glad I'm making it before I actually am posting that tutorial because I had to change one of the steps. It was just out of order, but um, it actually made a big difference. Now I'm gonna move here to try to get my computer out of the way. I've got it going so that I can actually see your comments. Hopefully, uh-oh, it just disconnected itself. It didn't really like me doing that. That's so funny. Why did you do that? That is so weird. It totally disconnected from the internet. <laughs> I've never had to do that before. It's weird. Hi, it's nice to see you. So today I am going to do, well, I have it posted if you are on Pinterest at all. You've probably seen the uh, the center step easel card. Um, I did it with caroling mice. It turned out really cute. I think you're going to really like it. It's a, it's, this is actually a design I saw from uh, Sam Calcott from the UK, she made a really big version of this. We've seen this before in, you know, various forms over the years, this center step card. So this is not a new design at all, but it's, um, she did it in a large format and it looks really good. So I, today I want to use this happier and happier with it. The paper that comes with that is really cool. So you're going to you're going to really like it. Now I'm finally getting myself back online over here. I can't believe that it disconnected me like seriously. But at least it's going. And actually my internet hopefully is working good today. <laughs> Hi Priscilla, it's nice to see you. Thanks for joining me. All right, now remember just go ahead and share. I didn't put down a, a host code or anything today because I didn't have time to. So I'm not going to worry about any of that, um, but at least you'll be able to see me make struggle through the directions on this. I um, I didn't really want to do it exactly the same way that Sam Calcott did. She did a marvelous job, so I'm not criticizing the way she did it. It's just that the way she did it would have been really hard for me to write um, written, you know, would have to do written instructions because she had to draw lines and stuff like that. So. It's pretty hard for me to to accurately write instructions for something like that. So the way I did it today, it it wrote out better. I just need to get the um, order of the steps right. <laughs> Hopefully it will. Uh, oh, my phone's like super fussy right now. Hold on. I got to go super slow because it doesn't like to be rats. It's like not wanting to move here let me hold my hand so you see my hand and then maybe it won't it'll realize oh it's okay it's okay it's okay okay good all right so we did get transferred over this way excellent i'm so glad because it works much better when we can actually see everything okay so that is done i think i'll probably adjust as i go because once i can see it on too far. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, so here we go. I'm gonna get my this. Normally, I have stuff written out here, but I don't today. All right, so this is the card that I'm gonna do with you. Oh, it got really badly flattened out here. <laughs> I had it under stuff. So the back of this actually. Uh, you you could adjust it so that it can fold up like this, but then you would have to decorate this side too, and I didn't want to do that. So I am going to go ahead and keep this folded back. It also makes a nicer, you know, backing here when it's folded like this. I, I think it will be easier for people to open and figure out what to do with it too. I'm, I'm not sure. I also like that I could... Um, I, you know, you can use this whole space in here to write on. So, um, so that's the way I'm doing it. I'm flipping this up, but I just want to show you that you can indeed go this way. Uh oh, it looks like when I took pictures, it was raining a little bit that day. It got a little wet right there. Oh, well, I'll have to fix that with my pen, but it just sits up here. It's, it sits up. Well, if it's not all propped up with papers and everything, um, it actually sits up really, really nicely and um, without any effort at all. So I really liked this one. 
Um, but we are not going to use, I didn't want to do Christmas today. I'm just not quite ready. Fine for Christmas for all of the, um, hi Diana. It's nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. It's nice to, I, I you know, I can see that stuff on my phone, but I can't see it. Michelle, it's nice to see you too. How are you? Oh man, you guys, Michelle and Diana, uh, it looks like you're hot, hot, hot today. Oh my goodness. I'm not sorry I'm where I am. It's really going to be hot here today later too, but nothing like what you guys are are looking like you're going to be today. I kind of keep an eye on it just to to see see what it's like. Okay, I'm going to have to keep this card handy cuz I'm going to have to refer to it, I think, as we go. Now, I did as you can see, I took a piece and kind of I did it already, and that's I had to do that to make sure my tutorial was written correctly. So I'm just going to bring this out. What you are going to need for this, though, is a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. Just to let you know right off, you you can you can do it by cutting, and but you're going to end up with extra fold, you know, thicker folds that you then you are going to want. So you, you're not going to want to do it with um, your eight and a half by 11, which is what I have here. You need a 12 by 12. You also do need an extra sheet of paper. It takes a pretty good bit of cardstock. So what I brought out, um, to go along with this, um, what is this paper called? This is called the Happy Forest Friends DSP, which goes along with our Happier Than Happy set. Um, and I also brought out my Rings of Love. This is our celebration paper. And remember, for every $50 you buy, or if you get up to 100 you can get, you know, the, the, the hippo dies and stamps and everything. But And to get the Rings of Love, I think you might. Ladies, do you have to buy $100 worth of stuff to get this paper? Because this paper is really good. I like it. So I've got it in case I want to use it with this. Now this um, color is actually probably sweet sorbet, but I did not have a 12 by 12 sweet sorbet. So I am using my poppy parade instead. So what I did is I took my 12 by 12 sheet, which is what this is, and I stuck it over here on the six inch uh, measurement and just cut that paper. Oh, I feel like it's cutting again. There we go. Okay, it did. It just cut a tiny bit that I had off probably on the bottom of this track. Here, let me move this up because it looks like I'm not, my phone is sort of like not letting me get everything in here the way I want it. Let me see if that's better. I don't really need you to see my lap, but um, it. I creep closer to me, so I kind of need you to be able to see like right next to me. Otherwise, I don't. And you're going to see all this mess stuff over here too, but you, you kind of have to in order to, I guess I could move it over a bit. I'm just not sure if I'm getting it all in. Okay, I think we're good. There, now you can see my stomach. <laughs> or you did for a minute anyway. I know it's a little crooked, but I'm not really sure if I can fix that easily. My phone is like, creak. Okay, hey Will, it's good to see you. It'd be nice to have a tech person here who could do all these things for me. <laughs> the, the big wigs do. They have tech people on the side managing all kinds of things for them. All right, so I cut this 12 by, I pretend I had this 12 by 12 piece of paper and I cut it in half at six inches, okay? So then after you do that, you're gonna turn your paper the part that you have, this is your six by 12 piece, and put it at the five inch line and use your scoring tool, but you're not gonna score all the way through. You're gonna find your one and a quarter inch spot here. So on your cutting blade, you've got measurements. So find where it says one and a quarter, and you're going to, make sure I'm telling you correctly, you're gonna score out, so, oh, let me find my written instructions too, because that'll help me make sure I'm following my written instructions accurately, because they were accu accurate. So you're not gonna score this middle section on this first score, okay? 
Thanks, thanks, Will. You would be really good. And it, if I made enough money to do it, it would be great. Sweet for all of us. But unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> all right. So um, we're not going to score this se middle section. You're going to just score the one and a quarter inches out. So find where it says one and a quarter, score out. And then you can count it up. I, it goes from six to four and three quarters is what it goes to, to score this. And I wrote in here, um, unscored center, because I'd accidentally scored it there, and I didn't want to mess you up. All right, we are going to not, we're not using the bar yet, but we are going to need it here in the next step. So let me push this out. All right, so now we're going to go to the six inch mark. Okay, line it up at six inches. Now we're going to just score this center piece in between these one inch things. So I did take a pencil when I had it up here. Okay, when I had the lines like right here in the middle and I took my pencil and I marked one and a quarter there and I marked the four and three quarters mark here. Okay, and then when I go to the six inch line, that might help you know where to, to score because you're just gonna score in the center. So if you see your dots, you're just gonna score right there in the center from one and a quarter to four and three quarters right there, okay? Now we're gonna bring this all the way up here to the number 10 inch line, 10 inch, and we're gonna score just the outside again. Same score as before, going in one and a quarter inches here, one and a quarter inches there. So you score there, lift it up so you don't score that center, and one and a quarter there, okay? Now you're going to put your paper at 11 inches here. This is the only one that goes all the way across on the bottom. Now here's the tricky part. You're done with your score tool for, for the moment. You need to cut these score lines here. So turn your paper so you have this long um, score that you went all the way through. It's the only one that goes all the way through. Put that up at the top and move your paper to one and a quarter inch. Okay, so your one and a quarter inch line is right where all of those score lines ended where you didn't do it all the way through. So one and a quarter, you get that up there, and then you find find your first lines where you score just the, the outside, right from there. This is a six inch cut, and I'm not actually gonna cut because I don't want it to cut again. I've already cut it but I also I'll fake cut it. I'm cutting just the six inches just from there, from that fold line to this top fold line that we did the first score at. And that's six inches. And then you can just move your card stock to find the one and a quarter inch on this side of your blade. Okay, find that one and a quarter spot. So you know you're cutting in one and a quarter and you're gonna cut the same same thing from the top fold line down to this first fold line that's just going to the outside. All right, so now that you're done with that, you're gonna take your card and um, this fold is a mountain fold right there. This top fold is also a mountain fold. So it's gonna go like this, okay? Can you see that? And then this fold is a valley fold on the very bottom. That's the one that goes all the way across. The next one, of course, is a mountain fold. Anytime you have a valley fold, the likelihood is you have a mountain fold next and vice versa. And then when you're doing that, that one kind of goes automatically the way it's supposed to. And so now you should have a card that's flat and looks like that. Okay, so this is the front part. And um, I had already attached the back piece to it when I had us do the cut lines. And that's the step that I had out of order. Because you really can't cut these cut lines when you have your back piece on. So let's cut out the back piece that goes onto this. <laughs> 
<laughs> I feel like I'm in like super t duper teacher uh, mode right now because I'm like super focused. I don't want to screw this up because I don't want to have to waste a whole other piece of cardstock. So I'm sorry if my tone is like super sharp here, but that's just kind of the way it is. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do the, let me find it because I got it out of order on my steps. Let me find where I am. Well, this piece is going to be, oh yes, six by seven. So I'm going to go ahead and do the six inches here. Okay, so we're going to cut a six by seven inch piece. And then where the seven inch line is, I'm going to just flip it so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to just score at one inch here. Okay, so one inch score line there and fold it. This is gonna get glued on and I'm gonna glue it to the inside of this card because we're gonna have some DSP that's gonna kinda cover it. If you don't like that though, you can put it on the back. It's just that I know the back is gonna be showing and I'm not gonna put DSP on my back. <laughs> not on the my back of my body or the back of my card. So I am going to go ahead and glue it like here. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna put this cutting board away for now, just to the side, because I'm gonna not, I'm gonna still be needing it, but um, I'm not, not using it right at the moment. And I tend to get glue all over the place. All right, so the hard part is done. Now is just the fun, fun, fun part. When you're, you know, for me, when I'm cutting and doing math in my head and all that, it's like, ah, I've got my tongue stuck half out of my mouth and f furrowed brow, thinking really hard. <laughs> it's really hard for me, apparently. So now that part is done. Now it's all just joy, joy, fun, fun. Okay. It's, I just did it the wrong way. So I'm going to I'm going to have to fold it the other way cuz I want my my glue to be on the inside of this card like this. Okay. So now it should be stuck together good and proper. And then I'm going to end up needing to have it folded up like this. Now, if you do want to have your card back come up over this is the time, do, do, make sure that's going to come up nicely and you don't have to redo your score line there. I'm like, I just put it on, but it looks like if I did that, there's a little bit hanging out here on the side. So do trim that off if yours is doing that too. I'm going to fold mine back. So it, it does not make any difference for, for my card. And I unfortunately did have a score line right here because I did that accidentally. Oh well, we're gonna cut I might have to I might have to cover that guy up. Now if you don't like it, you've got you know stuff you messed up with, you can always just flip flop it and do it the other way. But we're gonna just live with it for now. All right, now we're ready for the DSP. Now I didn't want to take like tons and tons of time coloring my mice. It's partly the reason I didn't do this this particular card with this pattern today because he, they are a lot of coloring. I will use those later. That is a host set, and it is a set that you can only get if you have a party, uh, or either an online party or one with me. I would love to have you join me. So if you wanna do an online party and host, um, it's easy to get to the $150 level, very easy. All you have to do is basically have three or maybe at most four friends buy things with you. You will go way over your 150 level and then you can get the host set for $12. It's a really cute set and um, I think you'd like it. All right. Um, Let's look at my jokes today. Did you know uh, today was actually a very sad beginning of the day? I was sitting out on the porch just happily, happily looking at the birds. I had Blue Jay come and visit us today. That was really exciting because um, normally, oops, I have my sample here. Let's let's do my sample and then I can use the one with my instruction as a, a something else. So let me get my sample going here. I think this one... I think I did it correctly. Let's see if I did. Oh, yeah, I have a fold in the wrong place. That's 
that was it. Okay, there we go. So I'll have to make sure I cover that up because I put I accidentally scored where I wasn't supposed to on that one. So the, I had a Blue Jay visit, and Jeff just was saying to me on um, yesterday at church, I haven't seen any Blue Jays lately, and have you? No, I haven't seen any Blue Jays. They're awfully cute. Well, I saw one. It's like, thank you, God. That was such a nice surprise to see Blue Jay this morning. So I was enjoying that, and there were cardinals. All of a sudden, whoa, wall up a cat, that white cat that was hiding on the fence on the top of the post, you know, that goes across the fence on the other side of the fence, though. If I had seen it laying there, I would have gone and scared it away. But it was laying there, and it caught a beautiful red cardinal. I was so mad at that cat. Um, I We have not seen it catch any actual birds it's, you know, been pretty inept. And so I thought, no way, that stinking cat, because now if it's learned to do that, it will be doing that. And um, it doesn't eat the birds. It just kills them. And it's really annoying. All right. So I don't know what to do. I'm going to go online and see if there's something I can stick on my fence. Also, I guess I could just move my feeder away from the fence. Maybe they wouldn't, birds wouldn't perch on it so much. Let me look and see how big of a piece of this DSP am I supposed to be cutting. All right, so we're going to cut this um, four and three quarters by three and a half. So the four and three quarters is going to be from top to bottom. And I want to make sure it's centered this way. So I'm going to just kind of make a preliminary cut here to get this design that I'm going to use. And then I'll shorten it up to what the size actually is going to be once I get it here. All right, so this is what we're going to use for the center. It's so cute. Just like that, isn't it? Put your little cinnamon on there. You're all set. All right, so we need this to be four and three quarters. So let's see what we've got. Oh, it's quite long. It's at five and a half. So let's take some off the top. Um, not quite that much off the top, though. I do want some of the top of the trees to be showing. So we'll cut that much off, and then we want four and three quarters. So we'll cut that much off there. Okay, four and three quarters by three and a half. Ooh, that's not very much. That's just to there. Oh, I want to keep that butterfly, so let's go... That's too much, too much, too much. Let's go right there where that tree is. And three and a half would be there. That's still too much. So let me take this and see how it will work if it's, oh no, it has to be, well, it, it can, it can work, it can work. Hmm. I wonder if I was supposed to do it this way. I thought it was the other way, but now I'm thinking maybe it was this way. I'm glad I didn't cut any more off because I don't need it to be any narrower than that at all. In fact, it, a fatter would have been fine. So it must be four and, um, four and three quarters by three and a half. But as you can see, it's really not going to matter. I do want it to be a little, it has to be shorter than this fold line. Oh, it just barely is, barely, barely. This is going to work, but you don't want it any shorter than that. So again, the dimensions actually are four and three quarters. No, is that right? Yeah. Um, four and three quarters by three and a half. Okay. All right, so this is just going to go on, but I, I need a little piece of, bat of paper here, especially since I've got it like that. Oh, my goodness. Why did I do that? I'm going to take my little strip. Do I have a strip? Did I cut that off? I did, I did, I did. This little strip. I might just apply it right where it will be, right there. Oops, it's upside down, right there. I think I will do that. Let's do that on some white cardstock because this DSP is very flimsy. So I don't really want to just stick that on there. It'll be just too, too, too flimsy. So I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock here and um, cut it to match the size that I've got. And then we'll glue this piece. I'm gonna glue this piece on here 
um, right to the right to the top of it. Now, in my tutorial, though, I have instructions for this card, so you have a big vellum piece that you're going to just stick on. And with this, this is that. This vellum is really nice. It's um, you can see the color of it through. It's really pretty. But I put glue on it, and I should have done glue dots because it tends and they don't spread. My glue spread is the problem. And you can put your glue dots right under your little snow. Uh, there's snowflakes and these like snowfall. It's really pretty because it's iridescent. It's gorgeous. But you would want to put your little glue dots right under there so that when you adhere your card, your, your paper to the card, you won't see like these little splotches you wouldn't see with a glue dot. But my glue, actually, it did do that. All right, so let's just glue this on here. And then I'll just trim my white around it. So anyway, I was sad about that, but I'm going to figure I can't believe I've got a cat issue here. I thought we left all of our cat issues in Richland when we left my garden there. But no, I'm still having a cat issue. And it's just the one cat, which is hilarious. We have one cat in the neighborhood and it likes to come to our house, of course, and torment our poor little cardinals and other birds, which uh, what other, whatever birds it can get. And um, anyway, that's what cats do. Again, if it ate the bird, I wouldn't even mind so much, but... It's not even bothering to eat the birds. It's just, and then it can, it'll catch a lot, you know. It's not, if it ate them, then they would only catch, you know, catch what they are going to eat and they would leave the other ones alone. Okay, this needs to come. Hmm, what am I doing here? So this has to come forward. Why is it not coming forward? Because I have it folded incorrectly, I believe. What happens? You know, this comes down. This is correct. That's there. That's there. <laughs> there. Okay, I just had it folded incorrectly. So you've got a mountain fold. Val yeah, that's what I told you. This is the sample, and I didn't have it folded exactly right. So this way, it can just sit right on here however you want. You can lower it if you want, but I'm actually going to put it up because I want some DSP at the bottom here. And, um, and I'm going to, I'm just kind of eyeballing it here because I want to get my tree like right in the right place, right under here. So I think what I'll do is just put dimensionals on it. And then that way, um, I don't have to really, I can slide that, that DSP down behind there pretty easily. Let's put the dimensionals right here rather than on the card. And then I won't get it in the wrong place. I cut my finger with my knife cutting fruit up. So I think I was slicing strawberries and I don't even know how I did that. It's kind of painful. And sort of my skin sticking to the dimensional as I stick it on here. My nail polish is really looking bad. <laughs> I just put it on last week, but it's a it's not wearing well at all. So I'm glad I didn't try to make my 4th of July nails last any longer than one week cuz they're not. They're definitely going to go away today and I cut them all super short because one broke, of course, and I just thought, fine, I'm going to cut all of you guys down pretty short and then We'll try again later with a new new batch of nail polish. Okay, so you just stick that on there. And then I'm going to glue this behind here and then trim off around after I get that stuck on there. So that it's in the right place. Hmm, It's got to be like up there to be right. Huh, maybe I want to just leave it off. I think I will. I think that'll be too trouble too problematic. We'll just leave it off. Now, I do want I kind of liked having this set. I picked this set because it had the lamp post. 
So I could put two lamp posts on each side to just kind of soften up that hard edge. So let's look at the paper and see what we've got. Now I know in this set, there's a lot of things that I can play with. I've been playing with it already. The bear is much larger, as you can see, which is kind of nice. And he's waving the other direction too. And in fact, all the images that are on the paper are just larger here on the set. And um, I, both of them work, but they don't work together in this manner when I have this as the highlight. So we're going to have to stick with my card stuff, what's already here. We have a lot of images to use, right? So why not just use them? We will just do a little fussy cutting here. What do you call a fly without wings? I think I did this joke last week. It just, um, it sounds way too familiar. I'm not sure. So we'll just say it. It's a walk. Ha ha. That one's not as funny as it could have been. There are some good ones yet though. Why should you never trust a pig with a secret? Ooh, that sounds like a good one. Why should you never trust a pig with a secret? Now, I'm not talking about a person that you might call a pig. Um, I don't think people call people pigs anymore, which is kind of funny because of all the mean things that are said about others. Um, generally, when in my day, that just meant they were a very messy person and didn't take very good care of things. And that's just a wrap on pigs, I guess. But they do look pretty messy <laughs> unless they are kept really clean. They do like to wallow in the mud, don't they? Why should you never trust a pig with a secret? Because they squeal, of course. Isn't that a good one? I like that one. That one's funny. All right, let's try a tree. You could do half of a tree because we're not going to get a whole tree on there. And then that way we can have... Well, let's cut these down here that I've already kind of chopped up the paper with. We'll cut these guys out. And I know some people don't like to fussy cut. These trees are very artistic, so I am not going to leave a little edge at all. You won't need to, and then you can cut faster and not worry about cutting into, um, there's no line, you know, to leave. So it's not like you have to really worry about that. And they're easier to fussy cut than some things are. This bottom part, I am going to leave a little line. Okay, so there we go. Let's see how that looks. Oh, it's a little bit weird. Let's see what it looks like if I cut it in half. Shall we? Let's see. And then we'll put one here. Mm, I don't like that. I don't like that. We're not doing those trees. Let's see what else we have. We have one really big big tree but I'm afraid you are way way too big I don't want to do that let's see what other paper we have and if we don't have paper we like then I'm just not going to do it I can just stick my little owl on the side he would look really cute there we can do that there's this little bird in case I use the owl I think I'll cut the bird out too and that way we can see how that looks all right Oh, there's cute mushrooms with this set. Have, how do you like the gnomes? Um, the gnomes have like this really cool, it's kindest gnomes. And it has a bunch of gnomes. Does it have a bunch of gnomes? I, yeah, it has a few. But it has this really neat um, mushroom house with it that I really like, actually. It's the mushroom house I'm attracted to. I'm not a big gnome fan. I, as much as I like gardens, I think that's why I'm kind of, gnomes are like, ah, uh, you know, every garden place has got gnomes. I'm just, it's like having the, uh, remember when at Christmas time, the icicle lights first came out and only a few people had them on their house. And they looked so cool because there weren't very many. Well, all of a sudden, everybody had them and they just, they weren't as cool anymore. When everybody's got it, it's just, you, they're not, they're not special anymore. And, and that's sad because <laughs> when it's something cool, you would think it should be the more, the better, right? The more people have it, the better. And I'm not sure why fashion type stuff, that rule is different. I don't know why. It seems to be. 
All right, let's look at this card, this piece here. We've got a little bear, We could, but he's little. He's waving the other way. He'd have to be over here. He'd have to be like way far away. Yeah, you know, you could do that. It would look okay. I'm just not thrilled with it. So I'm not going to, but I am going to use this top piece. Um, we need a one inch by, um, you can do six inches if you want to bring it all the way to the edge. Because I'm going to have so much red showing, I don't think I want to do that. So I think we'll leave a little edge. We'll cut one inch off right here. Okay, and then um, I would normally do five and three quarters. I don't really want the fox's tail in it, but the fox could be in it. So let's see what we get at five and three quarters. Pretty good. Let's go with six just for starters and see what I think. Maybe I do want all of it on there after all. Maybe, maybe, maybe. No, I don't. So I'm going to cut the bottom off just a little bit. We'll cut a, about an eighth of an inch off the bottom. And then I think I'll cut an eighth of an inch off of each side. And we'll be set. Okay, I'm just kind of eyeballing it there. It's not a perfect one eighth. It's kind of hard to cut with this <laughs> one inch piece like that. It's a little tricky. Okay, one, that's one quarter. Let's do one, a little more than one eighth on each side, just about there. All right. I hope I'm not missing a whole bunch of comments on on the side. I might be. Sometimes I get distracted and don't pay attention. Oh, that's cute. I do like that. So we'll stick that on there. That looks good. Once you get to that front panel on, it's all just golden from there on. It's pretty easy. Um, pretty fun. All right. What do cows order from... What do they order from? That just gives it away because, of course, people order from catalogs. So that's what the answer is. But it's cattle logs. And I, I just don't, that's not even funny because no child would get that joke. Uh, most people, in fact, wouldn't even, they would like catalog. What's that? They go online and they don't really probably even know. All right, let's see. Let's stick on the little, um, if it was backed by something stronger I could probably stick it out here farther but again this being DSP it's rather flimsy so we'll just stick uh, I think we can get a whole dimensional on there it's kind of a fat I should get my mini ones out but we'll stick that on there let's stick it on there all the way and where did that owl go that I had handy here I lost him did I just throw him away? No, there he is. Okay, let's stick him on here too. He's pretty cute. And you can fussy cut the other ones out too uh, to put on the inside. You know, the same same images or different. doesn't really matter. It's going to be very cute regardless. What kind of haircuts do bees like? Ooh, this is a good one. What kind of haircuts do bees like? You don't want to go down below because, of course, this is going to fold up. So we'll keep it, keep it on the front. So that's going to go like that. And you're going to have this sitting up. So you want to have a nice big piece of DSP down here. So we'll just use the same one so that it matches my bottom strip. And, okay, so what kind of haircuts do bees like? They, li they like a buzz cut. That's a good one. So the bottom strip of, the, the, of this uh, is going to be, oh, let's see. Let me find that page. Hmm, white cardstock, uh, blah, 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 bottom piece is five by five and a half. Oh, no, that's the big piece. The, the the support is what I'm looking for. Well, let's measure it. I don't know if I have a support piece that's the same. What I did is I did a whole big piece. So let's just do one big, giant piece. We'll, we'll, do, it, we'll do it from here to there, okay? 
So we want this to be five by five and a half. Let's see what this is. This is about a little bigger than five and a half, and I'm going to just leave it. And I think I'm going to go five and a half, actually. Um, it, my directions say five, but I think the five and a half is going to be fine, too. Let's look and see. Yeah, that is. It's going to look great. So we're going to do five and a half by five and a half on this. Slightly different than the tutorial. So if you write, if you're, if you're going to be looking at that tutorial later, Buzz, that's good, Will. You got it, huh? Nice. Nice job. <laughs> you should know all about that. Our son um, probably didn't always appreciate the buzz cut, but, you know, I think he's going to be fine if I tell. It's not about him really anyway. It's both of our boys. They happened to be in a school where there were some kids that had head lice quite frequently. And um, that buzz cut eliminated that as being a constant problem. So they had a buzz cut for so many years. I don't even remember when we finally said, maybe that's why you guys had your hair so long when you were teenagers is a sort of payback for all of the buzz cuts that you'd had. All right, now you want a big piece in the middle and you want it to be white that you can stamp on. So I have one handy here and that's the perfect size, isn't it? Like right there. This is five and a half. It's not quite five and a half. We'll make it that way. Five and a half by a four and a half. Let's do that, four and a half. Okay, so five and a half by four and a half. And that actually is not, in, on the inside, I think what I have is something slightly different. My blade needs to be replaced again already. I'm not sure why, maybe I just need to clean the track of my cutting board. Sometimes that's why your blade doesn't cut very well. So before, before you replace your blade, make sure you just, um, clean, clean this track. You can, in fact, I see a bunch of stuff in it. So obviously I haven't cleaned it. So if you just take like a little cl cleany wipe with something sharp that can go down inside there, you know, you can look at that. I need to do that. That's disgusting. <laughs> wow. All right. So that is a little job for me after I am done here with my card thing today. All right, so here we go. We want to stamp something cute on this. And I'm not going to stamp something cute on it. I am just going to put this DSP on here and my sentiment here. I love this DSP. It's really cute. I mean, how how adorable is that? I haven't even used this set. We'll use the set Happier Than Happy for You because I love that. It has a hello baby and a welcome so obviously this is perfect for a baby, but I think the images are really cute. So I wouldn't limit myself to just the baby. I don't know, this one's too cute. Maybe I do want to use the image after all. Let's do it. It has a die, so you can cut everything out. Some, I have, oh, the, the reason, I have some rings of love paper all cut out and ready too. It goes with this paper really nice. There is this adorable little label in here, nice little acorns and a whole bunch of them. Look at that. You get three of these little acorns, the little um, tree stump. <laughs> Very cute. I just need to put another magnet sheet on the other side because I don't have enough magnetizing to hold on to everything. All right, let's put the bear on here because he's just too cute. Too cute. All right, what, how can you tell if someone is a good farmer? This is something I know I did that he's outstanding in his, you know this one, you've heard it a million times, I'm sure. They do it with all sorts of different. Um, let's see, he's actually done with crumb cake, so let's stick with crumb cake as the bear's color. I don't usually use crumb cake. I've been using my um, cinnamon cider a lot, even though it's retired, I've still been using it. 
My crumb cake doesn't always stamp up all that nicely. I wonder if I should use my um, Stamparatus here just to be on the safe side. That way if it doesn't, doesn't stamp well, I can lay it down and do it again. Let's grab it and do it. Grab all of my accoutrements with it. There's the magnets, I need that. And then because these are cling stamps, I don't really need the big giant platform underneath. Okay, put my paper up here in the corner. And I've already inked this guy up. All right, let's stick him right there. Let's hope that's in the right spot. It's not really. Let's move my magnet. All right, let's see. Oh, he's like not at all in the right spot. Let's try raising him up a little bit. Still not. Okay, there we go. Um, pretty good. I don't know. I don't like how he looks right here. It's not very good, actually. With my cling stamps, a lot of times I don't like stamping so close to the hinge. Do you see how much better that is? He has got his little outline here. But it's such a slight little bit that I'm going to just use my white gel pen to kind of disappear you a little bit. It doesn't really, does it? I better put some ground on it there. That'll take care of that issue. All right, we'll leave crumb cake out. I am going to need to I'm going to need to stamp there. But I don't need the stamp apparatus anymore. So, we'll put you away. What do you call a man with a shovel? This is actually a really good one. Um, I don't think that kids would get it. You'd have to, this is a good one for adults though. <laughs> what do you call a man with a shovel? This is a really good one. Now, if you know what kind of humor I usually like, you you appreciate this one more because I'm so literal, you know. I'm a very literal person, so. Um, puns for me are just like so-so. Sometimes they're really funny, it just depends. Okay, we'll stick that away. Let's look at you. We have a little piece of ground right here. I don't know that I'm going to like it on here, but we'll try. There is some grass, so we'll just do our crumb cake again. We'll go off the paper and do a few here like that. And then I think what I'm going to want to do is add some grass. I normally wouldn't have bothered to do all of this, but... That little splotch there kind of spoiled, spoiled the whole effect. So we're doing it anyway. Oh, I lost my, there it is, lost a stamp. Okay, what do you call a man with a shovel? And the name, it's a name, guess, Doug, D-O-U-G though. I, I think that's really funny myself. I'm maybe easily amused, I don't know. All right, let's put the little owl there. Let's use crumb cake again for you. Maybe I'll let you just stand there. And we want to use our, our poppy parade for the sentiment, obviously. So we'll get our happier then happy for you. Oops, stick it on there. Oh, Poppy Parade, I haven't used you very often lately. Let's grab that out. Looks like I've got it on there pretty straight. Very good, very cute. You could do this, you know, that sentiment for anything. That's why I like it so much. It's cheery, it's not preachy, it's not 
Gaffin. It just is a good one. You could do it with anything. Birthdays, just anytime things. But I do want some grass. What do I have that has some grass in it? I know I have a ton of stuff, but something that's coming to the top of my head that has grass in it, I'm not thinking of it. I know I have some. Like right here, too, but... I don't see it, and I can't think of the name of anything that would have it. Hmm. Let me look over here really quick. It's not funny when you're looking for something. It's like, ah, I don't remember. I know I've seen lots and lots of grass. It's not the right kind of grass. I need, like tiny tiny bits of grass not this big giant bit of grass and I know we have a set that I just saw somewhere that had a tiny tiny bit of grass in it and of course it's not out I'm sure I put it away <laughs> I'm not gonna look a long time for this because you can always just do it the quick and easy way too, but I, I do like to use the stamps because the color pressure is going to just look better, but I'm desperate, so I'll just grab a marker, not the fat end though, and we'll just go over some of those little grass things there. Oops, this actually, I better use my old olive, it's, um, I guess I can really realize what's this this is actually wasabi that is not old olive at all but it's a little closer okay so there now we've added a little grass to it that helps a bit not quite enough though there we go to bridge my gap Okay, there we go. Perfect. Done, done, done. Now we can stick this on here. There's plenty of room to write. As you can see, that's helpful. What do you, what, how do mountains stay warm in the winter? This is a good one too. How do mountains stay warm in the winter? Snow caps, snow caps. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about that right now. I'm sure if you're in some heat, you might be wishing you did. A bunch of people are having a lot of heat right now. The people here kind of complain a lot about humidity when De Jeff and I don't think it feels like that big a deal. Um, I think because, you know, we just can't, coming from the Tri-Cities, it's super hot there. Oops, my owl got messed up. All right, now it's not, I didn't burnish my lines, so it's not really coming down as much as I would like it to um you can burnish your lines and it'll it'll do a lot better as you can see it's just sliding because it doesn't have its support it needs its support right here plus I am not going to go on and on and on um but I think I would want to have a sentiment kind of sticking out on the side here if it was me if I was done with this um I would want to add it I think to it you can get any kind of a tag oh that's too big but it'll work for this down here so I want to use um I don't know what this is I just have a whole variety of tags in here uh, so you know I'm just gonna find the largest one I've got and I think that one's pretty big so we'll just stick with that one and let me find one of my little poppy parade scraps. I'm going to do my sentiment on it, and then I'm just going to trim around the edge because I don't even know what dye that is. I would have to find it. Now, we've got our happier than happy for you, so I definitely do not want to use the same, same one. Let's see what else I've got over here in the corner. We've got all these new free stamps. This one is also a free one. This is a big one though. So you have to spend $100 or more to get this one, but it's definitely worth it. This woohoo is pretty good. And a hay wouldn't be bad under there either, right? 
But I think we'll go with a woohoo. He looks like he's going woohoo, so we're gonna do the woohoo. Let's see if it's gonna fit on that tag. I don't know if it will. I haven't used the woohoo yet. Ooh, it's pretty big. Ah, it's not going to fit. That means I'm going to have to cut out a one unless I can find one that's longer. I do have a longer one. This is a retired one though, I know. And it actually doesn't quite prop up my card as well either. It works better if you have a straight lined die, but we'll we'll just cut, we'll just put it and cut straight lines on this red around it and then that'll give it its proper propping because yeah, that is gonna fit, but just barely. The woohoo is pretty big, which is nice. That's why the die you know why they're making you spend a hundred dollars or more to get it it's a, it's um it's got a ton of things in it oops i just lost half of it down there i'll let you look at it while i'm stamping my my sentiment okay let's look at another joke How, um what or no, why can't a nose be 12 inches long? Oh, I think I've heard this one before. Hmm. These photopolymer stamps are really nice, but that's a good impression. A lot of times I like to use a foam pad under those though. Sometimes they don't get a good enough impression. You can see I'm wiping that off because that red is like super, super intense. And um, if I just wipe it on my little Simply Chamois straight off, I have to clean that thing all the time. And it takes a long time to get that red out. Actually, it saves you a little time if you just use a little wipe, first of all. Get most of that ink off before you do the rest of the cleaning on your stamp. It will stain your stamp. There's nothing you can do about that, as far as I know. I'm sure there is some kind of cleaner out there, but I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, let's see. Let's see about how long we want this. I actually want to cut it down a bit, so let's take um, half inch. That seems like a lot. Maybe not quite a half. Let's take a quarter inch off the side of that so that we end up with two and a quarter. And then I think that will work. Let me see what my size is down here so that I don't... Oh, I did it with a sweetly scalloped die. And I'm sure that one's not any, any, nar any wider or narrower. Right about there. Okay, let's see. That's pretty close. Let's see how that works with this card. Oh yeah, that's gonna be fine. It could be a little narrower. Let's let's make it just a little narrower. So that it's little easels not having to be forced back quite so much. Maybe just a little more than an eighth. All right, now for this part, I want dimensionals definitely on the back of this red bit. Doesn't have to be here though, so let's just glue this one on. Um, and a nose can't be 12 inches long because then it would be a foot. Now that would be a good joke for your students who are very young and doing math. What is that level? Is that like a third grade level? Second grade, I'm not real sure. Maybe even first grade. It's been a while since I've had to worry about that. Here in Missouri, I could be, even though I don't have a teacher's degree, I could be doing student, or I could be a substitute teacher because I was a para for so many years. And, and Jeff says that they would love to have me. I have to admit, it's been nice not worrying about that. But if I ever wanted to, there you go. I could do that. All right, you want a fair number of these on here because you want it to stick on really good. Ah, 
Very nice. So we're almost done. I hope this was helpful and you get to enjoy doing your own easel cards because these are very easy, fun to make. If you cut all of the lines and fold, you know, do the folds and everything for kids, they would enjoy doing it too. It would be fun for them and, and very easy because you're just cutting, especially if you have paper to do instead of a bunch of stamps, it would be less messy. So that would be my recommendation. But you would want to have all those score lines cut for them. And the especially that little side slit. That's the one that's tricky. But in my store, I have a bunch of card classes you can take online if you want. You have to buy the stamp set and notify me. And then I'll send you out the PDF. And you'll get your class on a very large discount. Uh, depending on how much you are spending in my store. If you spend, um, you know, a minimum of $55, then you would get 20% um, off of the card class and going up depending on how much you spend. Isn't that cute? I love that. Woohoo! Very fun. That is a really nice one, easy to do. William, I think I sent this card to you or a pattern one. I was or I'm going to. <laughs> Either I have or I was going to. And or am still. So you can do that. You can close it if you want. Decorate this side. But I personally will be sending mine like this. And then it's pretty easy for people to figure out how to how to hook it up. <laughs> Right. All right. So again, we have just about four or five weeks left of celebration. Um, free stamps with every fifty dollar purchase, or paper, or um, dies if you have those hippo stamps. Um, this set comes with the bundle and the die, and then you don't want to forget that paper too because it's super cute. And um, anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and get to go out and have some sunshine. I went out on my bike ride already. And, oh, I was so glad I got out there early. It was beautiful. Hardly anyone on the path saw a little turtle. I always see more wildlife when there are no people, so I'm excited about it. When I get out there before everybody else or, or in between the little lull. And, um, and so today I got to see a turtle. <laughs> that was fun. Anyway, I will see you next week. Monday. Yes, I will be here. I should be here for uh, several, the rest of July. Um, I'll take a little break uh, in the first week of August. I'll be away with my family. I'm going to try to get a video in there, here and there, but it won't be necessarily a live one. And um, and then when we come back, I'm sure I'll have all kinds of stories to tell you about our trip to Idaho. We are going through South Dakota. Is it South Dakota that has the... Um, Mount Rushmore monument there that Jeff's seen it and I haven't. So he wants to take us there so he can share all that with me. That will be so much fun. All right. Again, see you later. Have a great week. And um, next Monday, I'll see you. Thank you. Bye-bye.